morning, brothers and sisters. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a delight again to be able to share with us the Word of God in this last week of the last month of the year 2021. Hasn't the Lord been faithful? He's carried us through from January to December, and by His grace we are coming to the end of the season. And in this week in the devotion by the grace of God, I want us to share even as we take stock of how the events have been since the year started, the promise that God gave unto us, the word that we've been running on, and even the things that we have been able to glean in the course of time. And so in this week, I just want us to share on the lessons that we have learned. And I know I may be able to share one or two experiences concerning the things that the Lord has taught me, but I also want you to be involved and be part of this move by you texting, by you writing, by you commenting on what lessons you have learned in the course of this year and what the Lord has taught you as a person or maybe as a family or as a ministry, as a church. Allow us to pray as we start in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful for the Father that you brought us. Holy Spirit of God, we surrender to you even in this season and even in this last week of this year, 2021. And we pray that even as we look back and even as we just testify of your faithfulness, may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want us to look at one thing that I have learned in the course of this year, in the midst of all the things that we went through, in the midst of the fires, in the midst of the storms, and even in the midst of the stillness of the waters, that there are things that we can glean from the experiences that we went through. And this will be testimonials that we are going to raise before the Lord, even as we come to the end of the year. So go with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 18. Genesis chapter number 18, the story of Abraham, when he was visited by the three men who came and one of them was the son of God. And so we look at what happened and the Bible says that the Lord appeared to Abraham at the Oaks of Mamre while he was sitting in the entrance of his tent during the heat of the day. He looked up and he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to meet them and bowed to the ground. Then he said, my Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, please do not go on past your servant. Let a little water be brought that you may wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. I will bring a bit of bread so that you may strengthen yourself. This is why you have passed your servant's way. Later you can continue on. Yes, they replied do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, quick, knead three measures of fine flour and make bread. Meanwhile, Abraham ran to the herd and got a tender choice calf. He gave it to the young man and hurried to prepare it. Then Abraham took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set before them, the men. He served them as they ate under the tree. We are looking at the man Abraham, a man of faith, a man of the promise, a man whom God had appeared earlier in the course of time and given him a promise concerning how his seed will be great in the land and how he would be able to raise and be a father of many nations. And just like Abraham, we have a promise that God gave unto us. To some of us, beginning of 2021, there's a prophetic word that you received. To some of us, it's a word that was given prior, maybe 2010, 2015, that you're still waiting to see it accomplished. But what are the things that we need to do? Or what are the things that we can learn from the story of Abraham that can carry us through the season? That even in waiting, even as you wait for the fulfillment of the promise of God and he who promised is faithful, that we can be able to raise an altar of honor, thanksgiving and appreciation. Honor, thanksgiving and appreciation. We see the man Abraham, if it was a man who was not sensitive concerning the promises of God, if it was a man who was not faithful concerning the word God gave unto him, he would not have received these people. Have you ever been in a season of waiting? And honestly, even as you waited, you didn't have a reason to thank God. Because to some of us, even as we share this word of God this morning, it is the season of long waiting that sometimes you may not look at things in a promising way or sometimes you look like you've waited for so long that it may not come to pass. But look at what happened to the, to the, to the man of God, Abraham. The Bible says that he was seated by the entrance, he was seated by the gate, he was seated by the tree, the mamre tree. 
And I'm looking at Abraham sitting, not that he was expecting the visitors to come, but it was in the course of life that sometimes even as we wait on the promises of God, we continue doing life, we continue living, we continue occupying the spaces that the Lord has allowed us to occupy. But even in the course of waiting, we need to understand that times and seasons belong to God that he is the God of times and seasons, that he could choose a day like today to just come and fulfill his promise to you, that he could come a day like today and just even as you're sitting, maybe in your office, seated, maybe in your house watching, maybe running your business and even doing the errands that you need to do. And all of a sudden the Lord comes. So we do not have a prayer, a, a prayer arrangement concerning Abraham waiting for the visitors. That means there's something else that he knew, that he had a preparedness in his heart concerning the seasons that the Lord would shift in his life. I want to pray that in the name of Jesus, that even as you continue with your day-to-day -day life, have the preparedness in your heart concerning the things that the Lord promised unto you. Why do we say that this man of God was prepared? Because when he saw them, he rose up to receive them. Uh, the, the Bible says that when he saw the three men coming at the gate, he rose up and he said, if I have found favor, then he allowed them in into his space. It is important for us to know that even as the times and the seasons belong to God, it is the sensitivity of the Spirit of God that, that will lead you to be able to discern when the move of God is right. Praise the name of Jesus. That it will take the leading of the Holy Spirit of God to quicken you or to urge you or to nudge your spirit to be able to know that this is the season. Because these men would have passed. The Bible says, that even as he welcomed them in the house, they said, it is an honor, it is a favor that you, have, that you have come into my house. I allow you to come in. And he was in a rush, he was in a, in, in a quick state of action to be able to welcome them and prepare things. We do not see any place that he had known that the visitors are coming, that he had prepared them calf or, or, or kneading the ball um, or flour earlier because he was not expecting these visitors to come. But then in the spiritual realm, in the, in the sensitivity of his heart, he knew a day like this, the Lord might be passing by. He knew that a day like this, when visitors come, it is the culture of giving thanks. It is the culture of honoring people. It is the culture of honoring God. It is the culture of appreciating people and even allowing them in into our spaces that has brought people. There's a saying that says that some have welcomed angels thinking they were visitors without knowing. And when the Lord has ordained a season of visitation or when the Lord has ordained a season of bringing to you that which he promised to bring to you, it is your responsibility to be alert in the spirit. So one of the things that we can glean from the story of Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter number 18 is that stay prepared as you wait for the promises of God. If someone was to take you somewhere, if you are, for example, going for an interview or you are waiting for a guest that you honor, you stay prepared all the time. You stay ready, you stay clean, you stay alert that even if they will come in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening that you know that this man is coming, then you will stay prepared as you wait for them. So it is in the spiritual matters that we need to be prepared. Which word was spoken over your life in the month of January, in the year 2021? Regardless of the things that have happened, regardless of the things that have not yet happened, how prepared is your heart? Now we see this man being a giver that when these people came, he did not count losses. He did not think of uh, if I gave out this calf or if we, if, if we disarranged the, the, and disorganized the program of the people in the house for the sake of these visitors. Because sometimes in our culture, even as the Lord is saying that he's coming to visit us and the Lord is saying that he's coming to fulfill his promise unto us, there is a tendency of him coming in a way that we may not think that he's supposed to come. He may come packaged in a different way than you thought he would come. And so when we see these three men coming, the, the, the rising up of the man of God, Abraham, was that other than him being prepared, that he was a giver. He was someone who was able to release what he had. He was someone who was welcoming. Because in our day, the Lord is not coming as the three angels came and the three men came at the gates on that day when Abraham was seated. It could be that person who will come and knock your door looking like a needy case. It may be that person who will come and tell you, the Lord has put you in my heart. It is that person who will come with a packet that you've been looking for. Because the Lord is able to choose which modality he's going to use as he comes to fulfill his promise in your life. As he comes to warn you concerning something that is going to happen. Because the scenario that we see right now is when the Lord was coming to be able to do two things, to be able to confirm what he told, concern, who told Abraham concerning the seed of his 
Lawrence, but also to warn him about what he was about to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. So the visitation of the Lord or the appearing of the Lord in your status or in your position or in your circumstance could come as a warning sign or could come to preserve you out of something that is about coming or could come to be able to reassure you that the promise that he gave unto you is still him who is faithful to follow it up until it is completed. So it is my prayer that even as we host the presence of God, especially as we come to the end of this year, let us take stock and look back. What promise did God give you? What are you doing about the promise? To some of us, you're looking at the few days that are remaining to the end of the year and you're thinking, I don't have to believe God anymore. We only have five days left or we have four days left. But I want to assure you, uh, one day the presence of the Lord is more than a thousand years elsewhere the promise that he gave unto you. That which, are, which is supposed to be accomplished before the end of the year 2021. Whether you're going to wait until the 31st of December, until 1159, he who gave you the promise is faithful and he shall surely bring it to come to pass. So he did not look at it like a loss when he was going to give out. The, why do we say this? Is because the Bible says that he, he, was, he, was, he was in a rush. He was doing it with a willing spirit. He was quick to act. When the promise of God is about being fulfilled in your heart, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to be quick to act to receive. Yes, I know you may have waited since 2010. You may have waited since 2018. You may have waited since last year. But how about when the Lord comes a day like today and says, I have just appeared in your space. He comes and just fills in that void. What will be your reaction? How will you react? What will you do concerning it? Will you complain and you say, you know, I have waited for so long. I wish you came last year. I wish you came two years ago. I wish you did it in 2015. But this man, as he was waiting, his spirit was alert and sensitive. So in the course of this year, even as I was looking at the things that the Lord has done into my life, and even I was also appreciating, I have learned to raise an altar of honor unto him honor because even the people that he has brought at my gates and the people he has brought in my life as destiny helpers and destiny carriers, I give him all the glory because I know had he not allowed them to come into my space, I would not even have met them. Had he not allowed them to come into my space, I would not even have connected with them. And what are the things that we keep looking at, as, at how God comes and brings resources through men or even gives a realm award or even brings a prayer partner or gives you a connection? Sometimes he will use men, sometimes he will use a rema word, sometimes it is a vision or a dream. Regardless of how he comes, may we know that he's God all by himself. Prayer to, this, to these three men coming to come and visit Abraham. He had other encounters with God. He had heard the word of God. It is the Lord who chooses which modality he uses when he's coming to fulfill a promise concerning your life. It is him who is accountable enough to be able to choose what mode which way he's going to use concerning what he wants to do in your life. So this time he chose to come in the form of man. He chose to come, but then it is the leading of the Spirit of God. It is the sensitivity of our, uh, in our walk with God that will quicken us to be able to know these are not just men. And I've come to realize that even in the spaces we've been, God will use men who look like mere men, but they are not men. Some of them are gatekeepers. Some of them are door openers. Some of them are people who will mention your name in places of authority. Some of are, are, are points of referral. They will say, this is a woman of God or this is a man of God. They will refer you to spaces that you need to go. It is good for us to be able to be sensitive and look back. Which are the things that the Lord brought in your space in the year 2021? Which are the things that the Lord taught you through men? That is why we do not disregard any connection because you may never know. Let me give you a testimony. When I joined Deliverance Church Umoja, some years ago around 1996 and when I came into this place I honestly did not even see how things are going to work out but I loved the teaching grace in the altar, I loved the leadership of our, our father and our bishop uh, J.B. Masinde, I loved the way he teaches, he does not exaggerate the word of God, he is true, I loved his work of integrity but then I did not know that in the course of time the Lord would use me in the same platform to be able to share but even as the, the Lord allowed me, my part was to prepare for what the Lord said he would do 
because he had spoken concerning me doing ministry many years ago, even before I knew that I would sit and be able to share the word of God the way that he has allowed me to. But then as the platform started opening up, there are connections that have come by the reason of me being in the place that God wants me to be. So the sensitivity of the leading of the Spirit of God is that when this man was seated at the gate, the gate is a place of entry, it's a place of transaction, it is a place where you see what is happening, it is a place where you allow things to come in or go out. So he was rightfully positioned, I have learned in the course of this year, that the blessings of the Lord will find a man or a woman who is rightly positioned and who is rightfully prepared in his or her heart. Yes, I know God has promised many things, but how is your positioning? Are you positioned in the, in the word of God? Are you sitting where you're supposed to sit? Are you moving from the places God wants you to be because you have waited for a long time? Abraham was seated rightfully. He was positioned rightfully. He was at the gates, the place where this book could not pass by. And even in the verse that um, we have read in the last verse of um, verse number five, this is why you have passed your servant this way. Later you can continue on. He had the sensitivity of the leading of God that it is not a coincidence that these people passed by. He said, it, this is the reason why you have passed your servants. He's telling God, I appreciate you that you have allowed these men to pass my way. I, I need to host them. The other thing that he knew, he had to seize the moment and host them in, the, in, in his house. You know, when you discover that these people are not common people, when you discover that these connections are not just common con connections, your part is to up your game and say, I will not allow this opportunity to pass by. This man could have gone to any other house, but even after being rightfully positioned, be sensitive to know who passes by your gates. Praise the name of Jesus. There are many men and women who have passed by your gate this year, but I wish to pose a question unto you. Have you been sensitive to know it is the Lord who have allowed them to pass? But also understand that if they had not been welcome to the, to the space of Abraham, they would not have forced themselves in. Look back at the, at, the, at the events and the happenings of your life in the year 2021 and look at the many people who pass by your gates and what is your gate? They, they minister to your heart, they minister to your heart, they minister to your speech, they minister to your listening skills. Have you been sensitive to know who God made pass by your way? Have we sometimes lost sensitivity and the people who are supposed to be our point of connection, we did not see them as a point of connection and so we allowed them to pass. Abraham knew and said, it, I know it is by your favor, O oh God, that you have allowed these men to come. But also the other thing is that he saw them and recognized them. What are the opportunities that the Lord has brought in your life? Have you recognized them? Some of us, for example, if you lost a job in this season or you lost a, you, you lost a business in this season, could this be an opportunity for the Lord to up your game to believe him that you can leave the corporate and become something else? Or maybe you can leave uh, 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 being an, an, an employee and become an employer. Could this be an opportunity that the Lord has brought at your gate and told you, I'm shutting this gate for the sake of where I want you to go. I'm closing this door that you may be able to believe me for the sake of where I'm taking you. It is my prayer that even as we take this talk, this talk of this year, by the close of this week, that look back, sit down with yourself. To some of us, um, I, I love writing. I love writing. I hear more than people speak and I love writing. And when I sit down with myself, I look at my notebooks and I look at my papers and I start looking down on, I, I start looking and on what I wrote down and I start looking at what the Lord has spoken through other men and even through, through my life and even my walk with him and when I sit down I am taking stock and I'm thinking which are the things that I was supposed to do right and I did not do them right what are the connections that I lost and I was supposed to keep what are the connections that I kept and I was not supposed to keep so that by the time I'm taking stock, we are closing the year, but then this is not the end of life. We are opening our lives to the next phase in life. You're going to 2022 by the grace of God. We already have a Rema word as deliverance churches. We know what the Lord has said through his servants concerning what he wants to do. But then even as we close, we, we close the year and even as we close the season, is it that you have been sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God or is it that you have been ignorant because you did not have enough wisdom or enough knowledge to know that it is the Lord who brought these people your way? So what else did he do? Verse number six, the Bible says, So Abraham hurried into the tent. It is the 
ability to be quick to discern and to move with speed concerning those open. There are things that happen in our lives that will only happen once. And it is your speed that will help you to capture the move of God concerning what he's saying. So look at your life. How, how quick were you to act on the word of God? How quick were you to believe the word of God? Or were you waiting until the fullness of your time that you missed out on the timing of God? So I pray that in the name of Jesus, the lessons that we need to learn and the things that we need to glean from these experiences in this last week of the year 2021 is have you acted in the speed of God concerning this, the season that he has shifted in your day? So he said, quick, he's telling, he's telling the wife, quick, need three measures of fine flour, bake for them immediately. Meanwhile, he ran to the herd and got a tender choice calf. The altar of thanksgiving, the altar of appreciation causes you to give the best. That even in this season, look back and see what are the gifts that you've given in the house of God to the people God has brought around your life. Have you looked at the things that is weakest and the things that is the poorest and the thing that you do not need and you give it out? The altar of honor and appreciation and thanksgiving causes you to go to a place where you know you give the best. I have learned the art of giving what I need, not what I do not need. That I'm giving out of understanding that it is unto God. That which I would not want to receive from man, I will not give. I will not give out something that is old and used just because I want to get rid of it. I want to pick the choice. The Bible says that Abraham ran the speed and then he made a calculated move. The Bible says he took a choice. Hurriedly, he took a choice calf. He did not just pick anything, you know, the, the old and the lame uh, animals that are about dying and then you give so that they, you get rid of them and then you, you, you lie, you cannot deceive God, then you lie to yourself that you have invested. No, it is this man that we are learning from and the Bible says that even as he ran with speed, it is the choice, the best choice that he took, the softest. That even as you're raising an altar of honor and thanksgiving and appreciation to every connection God has given unto you and more so to him, let it be something that you sat down and calculated that you're giving the best because you know that he deserves the best. Hasn't he been good to us all this time? Hasn't he been faithful to us throughout this time? I pray that in the name of Jesus, that even as we glean and even as we look back, even if you have not been able to give the best, make it a culture and cultivate this culture of giving the best to the glory of the name of Jesus. The other thing that we learn is that he involved his wife. He told his wife, you do this as I do this. You need as I prepare the calf. Uh, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that even as you learn the things that the Lord has taught you in this season, do not be the only person who has learned. Let the illumination of the word of God concerning raising a note of thanksgiving unto him, let it be also given to your family members. Share it with your spouse, share it with your children. Lead them to a place where they can also be able to run with the culture of giving and giving the best. I will finish by saying this, when we have mastered the art of raising an altar of thanksgiving unto God and the culture of honoring God, then it will translate to us getting a culture of honoring the people that God has brought into our lives. I have looked in the course of time and in the course of ministry, even as I serve God, concerning the people God has brought in our lives, that we do not, we do not worship them, but we honor what God is doing in their lives. I have come to understand there is no gate that will be opened by an angel without using a man. He will come and speak through a man. I have seen in the course of ministry, the connections that I've gotten in ministry, God used men. I needed a man who knew a man that I needed. And by the connection and by honor, honoring them and by appreciating them, we have come this far. Look back at the course of the year. Which people God brought in your way? Did you honor them? Did you appreciate them? Did you love them? Did you pray for them? And some of them don't have turned them openly, but it is the action. It is the way you behave. It is the way you react to the connections. I pray that in the name of Jesus. And even as we come to the end of this day, may the Lord open your eyes to be able to see the things that you need to know concerning the connections he brought in your life. May we appreciate God. May we appreciate the connections. May we appreciate the men that God has brought into our gates. You are not a lone ranger. You cannot do this ministry alone. You cannot do life alone. That is why we live corporately. We live in a community. We live in a society. That is why the church is not a one-person thing. It is corporate. That is why we live among people. You don't live alone. But I pray that in the name of Jesus, involve people, learn from people, appreciate them. So how do we raise an altar of honor or an appreciation? It is through words. When Abraham saw this man, he ran and he said, I appreciate it's an honor that you came. We use words to honor people. You cannot say that you honor God without 
uh, announcing it publicly that Lord I honor you. That is why we sing praises to him. We sing worship songs to him. We adore him openly and we say, Father, you have done as well. Receive all the glory. How about the poor God has brought into your life? Use words, affirmation words. Let, let them know that you appreciate what God has done through them, even concerning your part of growth in the mighty name of Jesus. The other thing, it is giving of gifts. As this man ran and gave what he had, I pray that out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouths will speak honor and appreciation to the people God has brought in our lives and that the Lord will be glorified even in the mighty name of Jesus. So after we see all these things, he served what he had prepared unto them. He set it before them and he served them and ate under the tree. It is the same place where he welcomed the men of God that he served them. Service is a sign of appreciation that we serve one another even as we serve God. And I pray that even as we learn from this story and learn concerning what Abraham did, may we be men and women of service. Service to God, service to one another, service to in, the, in the house of the Lord and the Lord will be glorified. We look at the story of Jesus. He came to serve more than being served. We see him serving men. We see him leading people. We see him uh, raising people. But more so, he came to serve. That is why we see him as a servant because he came to serve God even as he came to serve even the people that he walked with. We see, we, we, we see it from Abraham. We see it from many men and women of God. But I pray, may the Lord lead us to be able to people who serve, to be able to be people who pray, to be able to be people who use these words that appreciate that honor in the mighty name of Jesus. So I pray that we will meet tomorrow even as we continue with the things that the Lord is going to teach us and that the name of the Lord will be glorified. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.